Hey everybody, Johnny here. I'm kind of excited about this video because this new feature for Blender 3.0 geometry nodes that I'm about to show you is one that I actually coded myself, submitted to the Blender team, and got approved for the next release. So let's get into it. Here I've got a pretty standard setup. It's just a Bezier curve and a Bezier circle going into a curve to mesh node. I'm using a point distribute node, going into a point instance node of just a simple rock object. And finally going to the group output. We'll see that I can move it around. There's nothing overly special about it. The new node I want to show you is under the curve menu. It's called curve length. This is a very simple node. It takes a curve input and outputs a value of the complete length of that curve. So here I could drive the density of my point distribute node. Now, if I edit my curve and make it shorter, you see the density decreases. But the longer I make it, the higher the density becomes. Of course, you don't have to apply this value back to the same object. Here I've added another curve. I'll bring it into my node tree, and I'll use it for the curve length. Now when I edit this curve, the density changes. Since you can have more than one spline in a curve, the curve length node is totaling all of the splines in that given curve. So if I duplicate this spline a few times, you'll see that the density keeps increasing. The current plan is to add the per spline length to curves as an attribute. Of course, you don't have to just drive density with this length. You could really have it control whatever you want. So as my first node contribution to the Blender code base, and the first time I've contributed in over 14 years to the code base, this has been an exciting project. I hope you find this new node useful, and I hope it inspires you to make something awesome. If you're enjoying the channel, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you next time.